Yo, Elliot, my question would be being an older king, I'm 58 years young, working for corporate America, I have to deal with this cooties mandate. <laughs> I think he's talking about the medicine. I'm not going to get the cooties jab, right? Even with the pressure put on by all. Well, that's good, right? So you know where you stand, you've drawn the line, and you said, no, there's nothing more masculine than a man who knows his boundaries and enforces them. You're not going to prick me no matter what, right? And we have so many powerful young and older kings in this program that have said no, and it's causing them a lot of, a lot of grief in their work. Young man, uh, Michael, I think it is, it is uh, Matt, Matthew, who's a Marine. And he comes on every, at least every other Thursday and talks about the challenges he's having in the military because he believes in bodily autonomy, right? And it's even tougher for them because I think when you're in the military, you sign your bodily autonomy over to the state. <laughs> so he's having a hell of a time. But I admire and I want to acknowledge all men who have stood up and said no, even if it costs you your quote unquote livelihood, because what is a livelihood with no life, right? And what is no life? What is a life with no sovereignty? So I want to acknowledge you for that. So it doesn't sound like that's the problem. Uh, he goes on to say, also, I'm dealing with a co-worker who's transitioning to becoming a female. So a man who's becoming a female. And he says, this bothers, bothers the hell out of me. I love the guy. And yes, he's still a guy to me. As in Arnold's movie, Kindergarten Cop, <laughs> he says, boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. Right. It's, it's almost too basic. The Marxists, they have to destroy everything. And so we see the Marxists and we, need, we see Satan through the Marxists doing all they can to pervert even the most basic of human traditions, which is boys have penis, girls have vagina. Right. But, um, you know, we're swimming in this shit and a lot of us are affected. So anyway, he says it bothers the crap out of me that I have to call him Jenny instead of Jeremy. <laughs> he says, I love the guy as a brother and is always there for me when I need him, to me, will never be a sister. This is a major problem in this world. So I'm going to, avoid, I'm going to invite you to, to, to just shift your paradigm for a little bit and, and, and try this experiment, right? So it sounds like you don't have any negative feelings towards your, your Jeremy or, or Jenny, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You say you love the guy as a brother, right? We've been, we've been through stuff. I know you, you know me. Things have been good. And when you love somebody like a brother, you know what men, we often talk about how women shit test each other, right? Or, or shit test men, right? It's one of the things, oh, what? be careful. Women are going to shit test you. You know what men do to men? Shit test. Women don't shit test women because everything they do is covert. They shit test men because they want to see if you're what you say you are, right? And so before they give themselves over to you, they want to see, is this man really what he says he is? So women will shit test you. But men do the same thing to other men, right? And, if you, and so you're old enough to know that if you can't handle a little jab from another guy, then you're just not going to make it. Guys do that to each other. I have friends, my brothers, my dad, right? They're, they jab me every once in a while. When I say jab, I mean not that jab. But like, you know, little elbows, little you know, jokes, right? Jokes and just, you know, my dad might not agree with something that I'm doing, so he'll make a joke about it, but you know, don't, don't hate me, right? It's the same things with friends and stuff like that. I have friends. I'm thinking one friend I'm going to link up when I go to Orlando. I'm always ragging on him, right? Because he sets himself up. But we're great friends. There's, there's, no, there's no hatred. There's just, hey, man, you still doing that effeminate thing, right? And I just joke with you, right? And, and the, th the cool thing is that when a man is a man and a man's with men, they can really handle it. What happens is a lot of guys can't handle it, and those are guys who have the mind of their mother. These are effeminate men. You say something to him, you know that one guy, you ever had that one guy amongst your friends? I'm, I'm assuming that you guys are kind of like me in this. But you ever have this one guy, who, that one friend, who you can't say nothing to that guy because he gets emotional. He throw a hissy fit. He take his ball and go home, right? That one friend is like, yo, everybody kind of messes with each other, but you can't recognize. And so here's the thing. Men, we test each other. Women test men because they want to see if he's made of what he says he's made of so that she can give herself over to him. Men test other men because we want to know hierarchy, pecking order, authority, and 
who you can trust, right? So this, this, this is all latent biological stuff and it's okay, right? Uh, so with all that being said, if this is your buddy, right? And he's going through this whole thing. I would probably, if he doesn't already know, let him know, hey dude, uh, you know, I, I love you. Like you told me, I love you like a brother. But I damn sure ain't never calling you Jenny, right? And like you could say it the way I said it right there because I'm being charismatic and joking, right? Like, hey, Jeremy, I know you're going to get your dick cut off and taking some hormones, buddy. And you know I love you, but don't expect me to call you Jenny. I might call you something else. Maybe call him Jay, right? Like I'll just call you Jay, right? Jenny, Jeremy, I'm gonna call you Jay for now. Is that cool, right? Because I got to do me, right? You do you, I got to do me. And if we're going to be working together... We gotta make, we have to have a trade. If I gotta walk around watching you uh, in a dress <laughs> and high heels and 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 stuffed bra, right? Like that's people like to say that you know you're you shouldn't violate people or um, how is it you know in, encroach or infringe upon people. But that's an infringement upon you as well, right? That's an infringement upon my sense of reality that now I have to watch you walk around in high heels and a bra and I know you're a man, right? That's offensive, right? The world is so weird where that person will be offended if I don't acknowledge their psychosis, if I don't play along with their game. Oh, you're offended. But how about me? I'm offended because I've been calling you Jeremy for the past 20 years and I got to call you uh, Jenny. You're encroaching upon my life. You're encroaching upon me. You're encroaching upon my sense of sanity in this fucking world. But I'm, I'm, what I'm, my point here for you is don't get angry. Don't get upset. Choke with him. Hey, Jay, just call him fucking Jay. Just call him Jay, right? I refuse to call you Jenny and just stick by that. Not because you're angry, not because you hate him, not because you're trying to change anything. Because, hey, that's the way I know you. That's the way it's going to be. And if we boys, let's just be boys. We just or we can't be boys anyway. <laughs> so just make jokes. Make jokes. Jokes ease stuff if people can handle jokes. Now, if people can't handle jokes, like I was talking about before, like when you shit, when men shit test other men, the guy who can't handle a joke is the guy that gets left out. You don't become friends. You don't get to hang with us because you're always whining. You're always crying. You can't handle a joke. People should be able to handle jokes. Look at what happened to Dave Chappelle. He tells jokes. That's his job. He tells jokes about all kinds of stuff, all kinds of people. No holds bars. That's what the Joker is. That's what the Joker card is all about. All bets are off. It's Joker time, right? Trickster time. I'm a Joker. But you know that there's a faction of the population that feels so entitled to your to your uh, allegiance that they can't handle a fucking joke. And you know who that is? LGBT. LGBT cannot handle jokes. Anything or anybody associated with sexual perversion can't handle jokes. And the Marxists created it that way by creating offenses. Right. And, and, and weaponizing the language. Right. They weaponize gender now. That's a weaponized word, by the way. When I was a kid, we said sex. Now they say gender because you could weaponize gender. You can't weaponize sex. Right. So well, you can weaponize sex, but the word itself. <laughs> so. Listen. This is a personal situation. Deal with it individually. Deal with it with that guy. I think what I said is a valid way to, to approach it, right? You know, be loose, be flippant, be fun. See if he can handle it, right? If, if he can't handle it, then he'll let him take his balls, <laughs> if he still's got them, and run. Yeah, take your balls and run, right? I have no animosity towards you. I have no hatred towards you. Now, I see where you're going with, you know, this is a major problem in the world. If we're going to attack problems in the world, where do we begin, Right? Because there's all kinds of problems that we could be upset about. And I find myself getting irritated too. But unless we're going to do something about it, unless we're going to stand on that hill and die, then it makes no sense to even bother. It makes no sense to say anything. It makes no sense even to be upset. Right? Because the world is going to do the world's thing and the world is under the, is under the grip, under the influence 
guided by, hypnotized, and riding off the cliff with Satan. And you ain't going to beat Satan. None of us could beat Satan. Only Christ could beat Satan, right? In Jesus' name. <laughs> so don't try to fix the world. Don't be too caught up in the problems of the world. If you have children, you know, you're 58 years old, maybe you have children, you have children, you got to protect your children, you got to protect your wife, you got to protect, like my father used to say, in these four walls. Anything outside these four walls, let the world go to shit. Let it, let it burn itself up. But as far as me and my house, we serve the Lord. And that's, you know, that's really your most important thing, man. Let these people do whatever they want to do. They're signing their souls over. They're, you know, that's what, that's, that's fine, right? Fine. You know, I've become less, less libertarian as I've gotten older and more conservative because I see the value in preserving tradition. But I still have a libertarian bent to me when I say, look, do whatever you want. Just don't force it down my fucking throat, Jeremy. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.